Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hana and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here I make videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of four. And today I'll be answering your questions. Yes, folks, we are back for part two of this series of Q&A videos. I have got a ton of Q&A videos here on the channel. I will link to a playlist of those down in the description box below. So if you enjoy this kind of video, be sure to check that out down there. I'll also link to part one of this series in particular also there as well for you because I did this a couple of weeks ago answering some other questions from this round of questions. Okay, so we have still got a ton of questions left. I know we won't get through them all today, so we'll see if there's enough for a part three. I'm probably... I don't know, but before we dive into these, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, June's Journey. All right, if you've been hanging around my channel for any amount of time, you have heard me talk about my love for June's Journey. And June's Journey is one of my favorite go-to games to relax and wind down. June's Journey is a free to download game where you seek and find objects in these beautiful scenes. Every scene that you progress through takes you further along a mystery murder story that all sets around the main character, June Parker, and her friends as she sets out to solve first the murder of her sister, and then she uncovers all kinds of family secrets, and just the story takes you deeper and deeper. It is so much fun. And all of this takes place back in the glamour of the 1920s. Download June's Journey for free by clicking the link that I have left you down in the description box and in my pinned comment below. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on your PC through Facebook games. So click on that link down there in the description to download June's Journey today for free. And then click the link again to get this fantastic hammock decoration to decorate your island. The hammock decoration is worth $27 and it will be available in your inbox once you have finished the tutorial. This gift is only available until March 1st. So click on that download link and get started playing June's Journey. All right, now let's get back to our Q&A. Okay, and now let's get to our questions. Okay, the first question, will your eldest boy have a bar mitzvah and daughter bat mitzvah? Yes, all my kids will have their bar or bat mitzvah when the time comes. For now, we're still at least a few years off from that for my oldest, so plenty of time off for everybody as far as how many years between now and then. So it's definitely not something I'm really planning about right now, but yeah, they'll totally all do it. Okay, next question, do you miss any part of Christianity? No. Okay, next question. Can you work? Yes, yes, I can. I'm actually working right now. YouTube is my job. So yes, I absolutely can and do work. So if this was not my job, I could absolutely choose to work any other job that I want. I could work in the home, out of the home, or of course I could choose not to work as well. Okay, next question. Can you wear makeup or not? Yes, I can absolutely wear makeup. I just personally don't really like makeup. I don't like the way that it feels on my face. I don't like how I feel when I'm wearing it. It's just, it's just not really my thing. And I'd rather not spend the time putting it on and taking it off and like that whole thing. It's just like one more thing that I don't need to do. So no, I don't wear makeup typically. If I'm going out somewhere fancy or if there's like a dinner or something, I might put a little bit on. I don't own a whole lot of makeup, but every once in a while I will put some on. Uh, next question, Ex uh, explain why you don't wear jewelry. <laughs> so I do not wear jewelry most of the time because Baby Firefly would definitely yank it off. These days he's really into pulling earrings off my ears. So not really enjoying that particularly much. I don't really wear a lot of jewelry during the week, which is why you guys don't see me really wearing jewelry because I'm usually just kind of doing things around the house or I'm running around doing errands and it's just not something that I feel like I need to feel put together. Obviously, you know, I don't wear the makeup. I don't wear shoes most of the time. I don't wear uh, jewelry. I just, I'm pretty basic. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I will wear earrings on Shabbat typically. Really, if I remember, it's kind of what it comes down to. Uh, and I do really enjoy that. And then because it's something I'm really only doing on Shabbat, it kind of helps elevate Shabbat a little bit and make it a little bit more special and that day a little bit different than the other days. But I'm not at all opposed to wearing jewelry during the week. I just usually don't. And when I do wear jewelry, I typically will wear like my engagement ring or some, and or I should say some earrings. I don't wear a whole lot of necklaces. 
Okay, next question. And that's probably, I should just jump back. That's probably because there's just been a lot of babies and little kids in my life for the past 10 years. And I don't know, we'll see. I'm still not out of that phase yet because baby firefly is very grabby. Okay, next question. Do you celebrate your wedding anniversary? Not really, not really. And it's not like a Jewish thing. Uh, most people I know definitely celebrate their wedding anniversaries. A lot of my friends, they go off on little vacations together with their husbands uh, for their wedding anniversary. So they at least go out to dinner or something like that. We typically just don't do anything. I'm really not a sentimental person. So like if my husband forgot our anniversary, which he actually won't, I will. Uh, but if he forgot the anniversary, I would just, I wouldn't even notice. I literally wouldn't even notice. He's usually the one who comes home and he's like, yeah, happy anniversary. And I'm like, yeah, happy anniversary to you too. Cause I forgot. Um, okay, next question. With four children, homeschooling, all the cooking for Shabbat and YouTube videos, when do you get some time alone, some free time, self-care time? So for me, that is in the mornings. I am a morning person. I like to wake up really early, like way before the sun comes up, way before anybody in my house wakes up. And I just like, oh, I just soak in all that quiet. It's the perfect time for me. It's when I like to do my tefillah. It's when I like to kind of focus. I can do some learning. I can read books. Like it's just this very quiet time that I cherish so much. And it is absolutely worth going to bed early for and waking up early for. So what time do I wake up? Um, I've been waking up at 5 a.m. lately and that's been working out really well, but I really could use a little bit more. So this morning I tried 4.40 in the morning and that worked out great. I, I'm still gonna keep experimenting with some of the times that I'm waking up, but I'm guessing I'm, probably 4.30 is what I'll start doing now, like starting tomorrow probably. And then it may end up turning into 4 a.m. I don't know. I think I, I used to wake up at 4.30 for a while. I think that was a thing that I used to do for a long time. It was a four or 4.30, I can't remember. But it's really nice for me to just have a couple hours before the house wakes up that I can just kind of chill and relax. And, and then of course I have routines set in place, like make sure the kitchen's clean before I go to bed and the house is tidy so that when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like, oh, now I have to clean all this before I can go sit and relax. Like, no, it's done and I can just sit and relax. So those are little gifts I give myself the night before. Uh, there was kind of a part two of that question. Are you able to have a girl's night out, like a dinner or see a play or something? And yeah, totally. It's just not something I do very often because I would rather go to bed early and I'm kind of a homebody. I enjoy being home. More of my girl's night out tends to be having friends over. And I do that a few times a month. Okay, next question. How do you, how do you use your son's cell phone when you can't turn things on and off? Okay, so I assume that you are discussing Shabbat and using my son's phone for diabetes purposes because that phone is a medical device that tells us what his blood sugar is on Shabbat. I did a more extensive explanation on this and I'll link to it in the description box below for you guys. But in the very nutshell version, because my son's diabetes is considered like a matter of life and death that we need to take care of him, we are able to use that phone to take care of him on Shabbat so that we can see what's going on. So yeah, we're able to use that phone. And that's just a conversation that I personally had with my rabbi about that. Obviously we can take care of our kids and ourselves on Shabbat in any kind of a matter of life and death. So I, again, I'll link to that video in the description box that goes into a lot more detail about that. Okay, next question. What was the hardest part about converting to Judaism and what was the easiest? Oh, that's a good one. The hardest part was going through the process alone because there just aren't a lot of people converting in the first place. So and it's not like I had like a buddy in the process of any sort. So it was just kind of a really lonely place to be. And it was kind of like a very limbo place to be where, you know, you're not one thing, but you're not really another thing. And, and you're just kind of in this weird middle place. So I do talk about that in my conversion series, kind of like how that felt going through the process. So I'll link to that down in the description box below as well for you if you want more information or if you haven't seen my conversion story yet. Um, as far as what was the easiest part to converting to Judaism, that's hard. Maybe moving into the community, that ended up being pretty easy. And that was easy just because everything just sort of fell into place really perfectly. 
and and that became a very easy thing. I was very happy with the place that I found to live in. I was really happy with how I was able to sublet my old place and move very quickly. Uh, my movers were great. Like literally everything about that process was very easy and made me feel really comfortable with my decision to move into the Jewish community. Uh, when I say like move into the Jewish community, I mean like move very close to the synagogue, like in that community where we're all within walking distance, which is really fun. Um, so that was probably the easiest part, just for me on a personal level. All right, next question. I have always wondered how Orthodox Jewish women get their hair cut or if other people aren't supposed to see your hair. That is a great question. I've talked about it before, so I'll just answer it super fast. But, but basically men are not supposed to see our hair. So what we can do is either have a hair cutter come to our home, hairstylist, whatever you wanna call it, come to our home and do our hair here. Um, we can go to a private salon or to someone who works out of their home. And this is a common job in Jewish communities. There's generally one or two people who do this. And then another option is to go to a salon that has a private room. Also not an uncommon thing, come to find out, that exists. I don't know, I cut my own hair. So I, I go for like option D or whatever. I don't know, I cut my own hair and again, I'm basic. So I just like, I cut my own hair. It's just pretty simple. Just make sure it's sort of even and yeah, there we go. So that's what I do. Now that said, if a group of Jewish women are, are like all like hanging out together and it's very private, we still keep our hair covered. Even though we have complete privacy, we're not just taking off our hair coverings because it's just us girls, basically. We will keep our hair covered in the privacy of our own homes. Okay, next question. What are your thoughts on the different movements of Judaism, reform, reconstructionalist, etc.? Okay, uh, <laughs> I did not preview most of these questions. I really just took screenshots and threw them all in a document. So I'm seeing these questions for the first time and I am, I am not prepared for that question. So I'm, I'm very familiar with the Orthodox movement. I'm a little bit familiar with the conservative movement, but not really because I've never really been a part of that movement. And then I was a part of the reform community. Reconstructionalist, I don't know anything about that at all. So I really can't speak to that. So for the reform movement, I was a part of that for a long time. And basically the minor standing of the reform movement is that they were doing away with all of the Jewish law aspects of Judaism and just keeping the cultural aspects of Judaism. But for me, I definitely wanted a lot more than that. I wanted all of the Jewish law. I wanted Shabbat. I wanted keeping kosher. I wanted all of these things, the daily prayers. I wanted all of that. And I found that as I started started taking those things on, my relationship with God was just growing so much. So I left the reform movement and to be part of the Orthodox community because that just definitely fit where I was a lot better. But again, I can't really speak a lot of the other movements because I just don't really have personal experience in them or I know really next to nothing about them. So as far as like diving deep into all the movements, that would definitely take like a whole video. Okay, next question. At what age do boys start wearing the kippah and girls start covering their hair? Okay, so for boys in the kippah, that is age three. I do have a video all about that when we did an up shearing for little dude. An up shearing is when they get their first haircut, they get their first kippah, it's a really cute thing. So I'll link to that video in the description box below so you can check that out. For girls covering their hair, that is not until they are married. So for me, I was in my 30s before I started covering their hair. If a girl gets married when she's 22, then she'll cover her hair when she's 22. If somebody never gets married, then they don't ever need to cover their hair. So it just depends on the age that they get married. That's the only thing that it has to do with. Okay, next question. Can you opt out of Shabbat? So my, my initial reaction was to be like, no, of course I can't opt out of Shabbat. But, um, I guess it's a little bit more nuanced than that. We have free will. Jews very much believe that people were created with free will. We have a choice between doing what is evil or what is good or what is right, what is wrong, what is uh, permitted, what is prohibited. Like we have this choice. So a person could definitely choose to not observe Shabbat, but we do have the obligation there regardless of what our choice is. So for me, I choose to observe Shabbat. Now, again, if there is an emergency, if there is a life and death situation, anything like that, I have had to drive people to the hospital on Shabbat. I have given birth on Shabbat. I've been in the hospital myself on Shabbat. Like there are things for sure where we don't observe parts of Shabbat because we need to take care of our lives. That's always more important. So we say we live by the book, we don't die by the book. Okay, next question. Have you tried any crafts that you just couldn't master and decided to break up with them since they weren't for you? So I would say crochet. I feel like I can't get anything past a chain stitch on crochet and I guess I'm not super motivated to learn more. Okay, next question. Do you also have to check that certain soaps, creams, makeup, etc., are kosher? 
For example, if there's honey, milk, or oils in the ingredients? That's an excellent question. Okay, no we do not. Because we're not eating those products, we can use them and it's totally fine that they don't have a hexure. The hexure is the symbol that tells me if it's kosher. Okay, next question. Who are your top five authors for pleasure rating? Thank you. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if I actually have a list for my top authors for pleasure reading. There's been a lot of authors that I have enjoyed. So Julie Heisey is really good. I enjoy her cozy mysteries. Ellen Montgomery, of course, and Green Gables and all of the rest of those are fantastic. Uh, really enjoying S.D. Smith, but I've only read one of his books so far. Jane Austen, of course, I'm having my Jane Austen year. Um, I don't know, I don't know that I really have a favorite, but those are a few that just spring to mind as being authors who I have really enjoyed. Okay, I'm adding in Elizabeth Googe because I can't believe I didn't think of her, but she's amazing. I've just started reading her books and become a big fan, and I cannot wait to read many, many, many more of her books. She's great. Okay, next question. Are there any food items you've been surprised aren't actually kosher or didn't have the certification? Yes, this totally happens. This is absolutely a thing. I get surprised every time a product is kosher and then it's not kosher anymore. That's always like, no. It's like I was at Costco one time picking up my favorite frozen veggie mix that I just love and, and it wasn't kosher. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? It was kosher like literally last week. And it was like part of my meal plan for Shabbat. Like I needed this veggie mix. And yeah, it was not kosher anymore. And that surprised me. So anytime that happens, that's happened with quite a few products over the years for sure. Um, as far as just like a general product that I pick up off the shelf, that doesn't really surprise me. If it's like something new that I've never seen before, that doesn't surprise me if it's not kosher. That's just pretty normal. I'm just constantly checking packages of new products that I see that look good and then going, oh darn, that's not kosher. I'll tell you one that surprised me was kosher is the Cheesecake Factory bread. I saw it at the store today, I picked it up going, oh, maybe it's kosher. It was kosher. Oh my gosh, I didn't get it today because I really didn't need it today, but I might be going back next week for that. Okay, next question. I know you don't show your kids in videos, but if a viewer saw you in real life while you were with your family, would you be okay with them approaching, saying hi, etc.? Yes, as long as you're a nice person, which I'm sure you are. I, I've definitely had this happen while we were out and about. It's totally fine. I actually really love it. I love getting able to meet you guys in person. You guys all get to see me, and it's, so it's fun to get to see you guys sometimes too. So yeah, please come up and say hi. It would totally make my day. Okay, next question. What sites would you most like to visit on your first trip to Israel? I can't wait to go, you guys. I really can't wait to go. No, I don't have a trip booked right now. It's just still a little pipe dream in my head, but um, one of these days, one of these days. Okay, the Western Wall, the Kotel, 100%. That's like the top of my list. Like I want to go there. <sighs> I, I sometimes, I literally will sometimes just watch, like there's like a camera that um, just shows the Western Wall and I'll just watch it and watch all the people there and wish I was there too. Um, other places I'd like to go, I for sure want to go and visit the Bubba Sally's wife. Uh, I want to see where my husband grew up, his hometown. I want to, I want to go to Tel Aviv and just kind of experience Tel Aviv. I, I, I want it all. I want to do everything. Um, maybe everything except like the Dead Sea. I don't know why that's a very, so the, the Dead Sea is like a super touristy spot, but it's just one that doesn't super appeal to me. I don't know why. I mean, I guess I should go see it just because, but I don't know. It's just not a place that I'm ever like, if I'm like planning a trip in my head, I'm never like, oh yeah, the Dead Sea. So, but it's a place that like, I feel like everybody goes when they go to Israel, so I don't know. If you've been to Israel and been to the Dead Sea, tell me if I need to go there or not. Okay, next question. Hello, you once mentioned that you had fertility issues and that your religion has services that helped you. Will there be a story time on this? I hope it's not too personal to ask. I don't know if I'm gonna do a story time on that. Um, Sometimes I think about it, but it hasn't been something on my mind lately. So uh, as far as religious services that helped me, I don't think I personally took advantage of services, but there are services available to help women with fertility issues, help cover costs and things like that. There's people who donate to charities to help uh, women in our community 
to be able to receive fertility treatments or, or, or doctor's appointments, like whatever it is that they, that they need. The Jewish community in general, the Orthodox Jewish community for sure, is very much about helping their own for a variety of things. We have organizations that make sure that people have food on Shabbat. We have organizations that help take care of people for funerals. We have like constant meal trains in our neighborhood helping people out. Sometimes people will just give money to the local rabbi and be like, hey, here's for your discretionary fund. Please help someone you know, who's in need in our community. So there, there's a lot of giving, a lot of helping, a lot, big stress importance on taking care of, of our own, which is really, really great. Okay, next question. How's Bella's assistance training going? I know it got sidelined when Baby Firefly came. Yes, it did. It actually got sidelined before that because I had such terrible morning sickness that I couldn't even like get out to her training sessions. It was so hard. Like I couldn't even fathom the thought of like walking around a store or something like that with the dog and the kids when I just wanted to go home and be sick. So we really stopped it before I even had baby Firefly. And then of course with baby Firefly, it's been really hard. We've tried to pick it up again and it's been really hard to be consistent right now. I gotta make my choices right now. I can be consistent with my children's education. I can be consistent with work. I can be consistent with putting meals on the table. I can be consistent with keeping my house clean or laundry or whatever. The dog's not making that list most of the time. <laughs> not with the diabetes training. Our dog definitely makes our list. She gets lots of love and attention, the walks, everything she needs, you know, but um, as far as like the diabetes training, because that's just like an extra thing, there really hasn't been time for that. Doesn't mean we're not going to do it ever. She has alerted on her own, which we think is really fantastic. So, but it's just to be really consistent with that training, we haven't been able to do that right now. And of course, now the baby firefly is moving and grooving all over the place, it's getting a little bit more complicated again. It's almost like we missed a window in there somewhere. Okay, next question. How is your five by five reading challenge going? Are you still doing it? I was so inspired by you to start my own and I'm definitely doing better in some categories than others. Yeah, I am still doing my five by five. Let me go grab my reading journal. Okay, the five by five reading challenge. My five by five reading challenge. So I just put, I put pictures of all the books over here and then I've got the titles and sections over here. So one of my sections is Torah and I have finished the book of Tehillim for that. I am still gonna do uh, Eov, Job, the five Megillot, Proverbs, and then Daniel as part of that. Those are all through the Nahyomi. So I'm just doing those at a chapter a day throughout the year and that will get done by the end of the year. For my Jane Austen, I have finished Mansfield Park, Sense and Sensibility and Emma. So I still have Pride and Prejudice in Northanger Abbey. Children's literature, I have read Pinocchio on the Banks of Plum Creek, Charlotte's Web, again, such a great book, and The Green Ember. So I still need to add one more in there. I don't know if we're gonna finish Little White Horse together, so it may be the Penderwicks, but I just need one more and I will obviously read another book to my kids. Um, biographies, okay, so I have read Holy Woman, Amuna with Love and Chicken Soup, and the Rebus and Kenyavsky biography. I'm in the, currently in the middle of the Baba Sully's biography, and then I'm also planning to read Rav Avad Yosef's biography this year. That one may change. And then I've read five cozy mysteries as well. So that section is complete. So I've got four, five, six, seven, nine more books to do on the five by five. So I've, I've definitely been really focused on the five by five because that was like the original reading challenge. I'm doing several other reading challenges as well. Let me know if you guys would be interested in like a book journal flip through and where I talk about all the books that I've read so far this year, because we're about halfway through the year. So we could totally do that. I just finished another book a couple of days ago. I haven't put it in here yet, but anyways, and I could talk about like what book I use and all that kind of stuff. Let me know if that's something that's interesting. I should probably make like a poll for some of these. Do like a poll in the community part. See if any of those are things. Okay, why isn't this working? Okay, next question. How do you avoid burnout? I've only got two kids, baby and toddler, and work full-time outside the home and I am struggling. You amaze me. Could you talk a little bit about your self-care regimen? Okay, first of all, a baby and a toddler is enough. That's burnout written all over it. Just having the baby and the toddler and you work outside the home? That's a lot. That is a lot. I don't have a baby and a toddler. I just have an in between a baby and a toddler. He's in that little awkward stage right now and older kids who help out. Okay. 
Like my oldest, he empties the dishwasher. He takes care of the backyard. Um, my daughter does a ton of help with laundry for me. All my kids clean their own rooms and pick up after themselves and their own toys. They clear dishes. My uh, little dude loves to wash dishes by hand. So like he'll take care of a lot of our dairy dishes. There's a lot going on here, okay? There's, I'm not doing everything. So they will get older, they will help you out. Know that. Um, as far as the self-care regimen, it was that waking up early. But at your life stage, you probably need more sleep. So I wouldn't recommend waking up early. Now, when I was more in that stage of life, one thing that I, my husband and I had is whenever he would come home from work, I got 20 minutes. They were my 20 minutes and I could do whatever I wanted. If I needed to go, sometimes I would literally go sit outside in the garage in my car for 20 minutes just to have quiet. Sometimes I would just go shut my door in the craft room and maybe knit for 20 minutes or I'd go take a bath for 20 minutes, like whatever the thing was, but I had 20 minutes. He knew it. He knew it. as soon as he walked in that door, I got 20 minutes. And I don't do that right now because it's not something that I need right now. But when my kids were little like that, goodness gracious, did I need it? So that might be something to try. Okay. Last question. Are there any aspects, traditions, or laws in Judaism that you struggle with? If so, what? And how do you reconcile the hard parts while living authentically? There is one thing that I do struggle with. I, there is like sort of a constant struggle and that's the, the waiting after I've had meat until I can eat dairy. So I wait six hours after I've had meat until I can eat dairy. There's not exactly a waiting period between eating dairy to when I can eat meat, um, but I would need to like rinse my mouth out or eat something else in between. But anyways, after I eat meats, if I even so much as like taste a spoonful of chicken broth, then I am waiting six hours until I can have ice cream, okay? So yeah, that can definitely be a challenge. And it's almost sort of like, we, we call it like fear of fleshig. Fleshig is like, um, I don't know exactly what it translates to, but like meat maybe in Yiddish. Um, so fear of flesh, I guess like a thing. <laughs> so yeah, like today I really wanted to have chicken for lunch. I wanted to have like a turkey sandwich or a chicken breast or something for lunch, but I wasn't willing to give up on that afternoon cup of coffee. So I didn't. Uh, and we are gonna have chicken fajitas for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna get my protein, it's all good. But yeah, that's definitely something that I struggle with. And I don't know why it's six hours. I haven't like dove into why it's six hours. I just sort of accept that, that like it's six hours. It's just what we do and that's okay. But um, that is, that one is a struggle for me. And then fasting, I'm, I'm very not, I, I don't enjoy fasting. I know that's not the point. It's not supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be a party, but fasting is really hard for me. So that's always a struggle. It's always a struggle like, even just building up to it, the fasting. When I have those things that are really hard for me or that I'm struggling with, I try to talk to somebody about it. Whether it's my husband or a friend or my rabbi, like whichever person is gonna be the best for me to have that conversation with at that time, that's who I'll talk to, depending on like what the topic is, kind of what the thing is. And so that I can kind of work through that because I, I, I don't want to struggle. I want it to be easier. So I'll discuss those struggles so that at least I'm not alone in my struggle anymore. And then if it's something that I think learning more about the topic would help. So like, for example, with hair covering, I was struggling with that. So I dove deep into learning about that topic and it really changed my relationship with hair covering for the positive. So that could help with some topics. So for me, it just sort of depends on what I'm struggling with exactly as far as how I'm going to, I guess, react to that struggle, how I'm gonna deal with that struggle, but I do try to deal with it. I don't just wanna let it sit. So, okay. That is all that we have time for today. And we'll definitely do another one of these because these questions are so good, y'all. And there are so many questions left. All right, but we'll do something else next week. We'll kind of just alternate it for a little while with some Q and A's and something else. And I think that'll be fun. But for now, I'm going to get back to my kids and life in general and all the things. So thank you all so much for being here. As always, I super appreciate it. Drop me a comment down below if you've got any follow-up questions from anything I've talked about in this video. And don't forget to check out the description box below because I've linked to some of those videos that I talked about down there. And of course, I've linked to you all about June's journey so you can download that game as well. And with that, we are done. Thank you all again so much for being here. As always, I super appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in my next upload.